You make a mistake, you go down. But if you realize, you make a mistake, you correct. And as you correct, and then you make the effort, you flap your wings to fix what you have wronged, you will rise eventually to a higher place than when you started. And you become a human being. We'll speak today about the idea of burning negative karma, eliminating negative karma in the East in relation to how it is perceived in the West as this atonement of, of sin. We'll take a few stories from different traditions to understand the essence. Basically, both in the East and in the West and in all authentic spiritual traditions, it is said that sins need to be paid, or rather to say, debts need to be paid. Karmic debts in the East, sins in the West. And there are two main ways of paying for your debts. Yeah? The universe will always get what's his. If you have a debt, he will pay it. If you created an imbalance in this universe, the universe will balance it back through you, you can either take the consequence, like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and Nazi Germany, and simply you have created some big imbalance, and you will be bulldozed uh, to the ground, or suffer terribly, or you can uh, create a certain inner transformation a certain spiritual effort, burning of karma in the East, or atonement of sins in the West. If you look at the example of Prophet Jonah and Ninveh from the Bible, it's exactly what happened. So, as uh, many of you know, Jonah received the vision to go to the neighboring empire, the enemy of Israel, and tell them that God will destroy them if they don't repent. And he got afraid, he tried to escape, he tried to escape God, fell off the boat, eaten by a fish, taken out after three days, and uh, then he said, okay, I can't escape God, rather have the people of Nineveh kill me, and at least I've done God's will, than, uh, yeah, than trying to escape him. He's everywhere, let's face it. So he goes to Nineveh, just try to imagine the scene. He goes in front of the public and he says, um, Hi everyone, my name is Jonah, I'm a prophet from the neighboring country that you hate, the little country, you're a big empire, we have a little country that's your enemy, I come from a god that you guys don't believe in, I'm his prophet, you also don't like our gods, and... Our God said that your city will be destroyed in 40 days. And he was, you know, I said my part. Uh, repent and you will be saved. Uh, and then the story takes a turn. The people of Nineveh, they mean, okay, he seems to have a point. He probably didn't speak like I spoke. <laughs> He probably spoke with the Spirit of God in him. And it clicked for them. And they heard the story, maybe, that he tried to run away and God brought him back. Something happened. It's a very short, it's not described. This part is just like one sentence, he warned them. And then in the Bible, okay, they said, then we will repent. Instead of having our city destroyed to the ground, they stopped committing all their sins. They stopped breaking the universal order and created imbalances. And the king commanded a fast. They all fasted, including the animals. They did a long fast to burn the negative karma or to atone for their sins. You see, they created a symbolic, self-induced suffering or tapas, an effort 
which was difficult, which was dissociating them from their instinctual part of wanting to eat and drink and be drunk and have sex, and they withdrew their power from that. They fasted. It was difficult. And in the process of going through that difficulty, they became less and less instinctual, less and less selfish. They grew a willpower. That's what happens when you do long fast. Their soul becomes strong. And so, after 40 days, nothing happens. And Jonah comes to God and says, come on, I knew this would happen. You are so merciful. Destroy them. Now I look like an idiot. And God creates a plant to make a shade for Jonah. And then after Jonah has shade for in the desert for a day, he destroys the plant. And Jonah was like, why did you destroy this plant? And God tells him, you cry about a plant that you didn't create and existed one day? And you want me to kill 120,000 people that I created over a long time? They repented. I forgave them enough. It's a very good example, very beautiful. If you want to read it, it's only a few chapters. Literally, if you listen to it, it's maybe 15 minutes. a very beautiful story. Another Jewish story, jump to couple of thousand years further, two, three hundred years ago, Rabbi Nachman of Breslau, he's going to Israel to make, he was a great mystic, a Jewish mystic, he's going to Israel to fulfill some spiritual mission over there, and he realizes as he's halfway, he comes from Ukraine, Russia, to uh, Istanbul, and halfway he realizes he's having bad karma, and he's going to die because he committed a lot of sin and he doesn't have the merits to enter Israel. So he starts praying and then he can pay off for his sins if he gets humble. So he starts playing. He's a very respected rabbi. Some say the greatest of this time. He starts playing in the mud with the Muslim kids and he speaks to some Jewish people as if he was a complete imbecile and everybody insults him. They don't know he's the great rabbi. So everybody insults him. He plays like a child until he is humbled enough. And then he gets the message, it's okay, your sins are atoned and he can enter Israel and do his wonderful uh, spiritual work there. From the Buddhist tradition, we have the great uh, saint, the most beloved uh, saint of Tibet, Milarepa. Somebody did some wrong things to his family. He becomes a black magician, a very successful black magician, and uh, through black magic kills 35 people. And then he starts dreaming of hell. And he realizes, I've done black magic. I made a pact with demons. These demons are going to have my soul when I die. And there's no way around it. 35 people through black magic. Really bad. I have to get liberated. I need to attain Buddhahood. Or I'm going to suffer like a dog in hell. So he gets to his great master, Marpa. And he says to Marpa, please give me initiation. i got to get liberated. He says, okay, okay, build me a house first. So he builds him a round house. And Marpa says, not good, this house, destroy it. Build me a triangle house, not good, destroy it. Build me a crescent house, not good, destroy it. Build me a square house, the square house is still there. It took him decades to build these houses by his own, but it burned the negative karma. And after he burned all that negative karma, he was worthy of initiation. And Marpa took him after decades of work as a spiritual son. He gave him the initiation and Milarepa went to meditate in a cave in the Himalaya for 40 years. He became so powerful. He had the power to turn himself to fire, to water, to fly, to heal, to see from a distance. When he died, he resurrected himself in order to do something and then died again. He was extraordinary and he attained liberation. And you can see the pattern. And we'll speak about this. 
You make a mistake, it takes you down, but if you correct it, you go higher than you were in the beginning. The great avatar Babaji, he, as they were sitting next to the fire, he took a piece of burning coal and put it on one of his disciples and burned a little bit his skin. And they were like, Guruji, with all the respect, why did you do that? He says, well, he had a really bad karma. And by doing that, he was basically saved from death. There was a particular astrological moment. Another great Indian saint, Bhagwan Nityananda, one of his devotees uh, came to him and says, look, I made a big mistake. I received some food from a Muslim saint. They actually get along very well, the Muslim and Indian saints. They get along excellently. In India, I received some sacred food from a Muslim saint. I didn't think twice. I wasn't hungry. I threw it in the garbage. And since then, I have this terrible belly disease. I can't eat. I'm, I'm in agony. I can't sleep. It's horrible. Nityananda looked at him and says, tell me the story again. He tells him the story again. And then Nityananda, like Nityananda, he doesn't say anything. He goes to the storage room where is the food. He pour, puts a newspaper on the ground and he pours beans and jam and flour and bread and I don't know what, dog food. And makes a big pile and takes a big stick and mixes it so it becomes nice and homogenic and it looks like the worst thing ever. It's a lot. And he calls the person and says, eat until the last drop. And the person, um, if, you would, uh, if you saw images of Nityananda, if he would tell you to do something, he would just do it. Very um, authoritative spiritual master. So the person ate everything. You can imagine the pain, the suffering and all that as he went through the horrible tastes. And when he's done, he's healed. You understand? The negative karma was burned in this symbolic way through the grace of the Master. Saint Francis, who was a um, proud, arrogant, uh, playboy, pleasurable, blah, 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 in his youth, the son of a rich merchant. And then he, he accumulated a lot of sins. He went very much against the universal order. And then when he assumed a new lifestyle, he prays to atone, to correct. And so he gets the divine inspiration to renovate the church, to wash the lepers, to help the beggar, to throw away all his possessions, not to keep anything for tomorrow, to beg. But if you would give him a piece of bread, he would clean your house. He would never receive it for free. And becoming so humble, and so selfless and serving so many people, his sins were attuned. And there is a moment, it's very beautifully described in his biography, where he receives a vision and he says, your sins are forgiven. It's over. And then he has the empowerment to become a great teacher. So the process, as described in this uh, wonderful Christian text, possibly the pillar of Christian orthodoxy, if you want to understand Christian prayer, uh, the philokalia. He says there, and it's not an exact quote, but pretty close, sin is the grandfather of virtue. Like the story of the lost son. You make a mistake like Milarepa, you go down. You make a mistake like Francis, you go down. But if you realize you make a mistake, you correct. And as you correct, and then you make the effort, you flap your wings to fix what you have wronged, you will rise eventually to a higher place than when you started. And you become a human being. You know suffering, you know mistake, you know the humility of recognizing your mistake, you know the willpower, perseverance, the suffering, the friction of correcting. You become full, you become deep, you become heroic. And with this you correct. And this is the spiritual revival. And this is what brings wisdom. And this is what brings liberation. We cannot but make mistakes. But if we are humble and we are open to feedback, and maybe we have people around us to give us feedback, 
and we correct, we will awaken wonderful qualities in us. This is the idea, both of burning karma and of the atonement of sin. And in one of the next lectures, we'll speak about how great masters have burned and taken on themselves the karma of others. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.